Uh, hi everyone and welcome back. Welcome to uh, the playlist where I'm covering about serverless. So in previous couple of videos we have already discussed about serverless framework. We know uh, we, we actually discussed about how to deploy the lambda using serverless framework right earlier we were doing manual things and now we know how to use serverless framework how to configure the aws for serverless and then start deploying the lambda we have also seen how to do the offline testing and offline invocation of lambda if before actually deploying the lambda to aws okay using serverless now next thing what we are going to do is this we have already done like we are using serverless and we are using this lambda and we are able to deploy this lambda to aws so we are not going to have a single lambda we also going to have you can see the api gateway and then we have lambda all these things will be there so let's uh, just draw that what all things we have so we are going to have api gateway and we have also seen the local testing of a lambda where it was pointing to some http server and we were hitting the rest api in the last video right so we have uh, this api gateway and it's not like a single lambda we are going to have multiple lambdas let's say you are writing some apis and then you have a dynamo db right dynamo db is a data source from where we will actually fetch the data read scan update all these things we will be doing right so this is th this is the flow this is how it is going to work and now if I want to set up this infrastructure locally using serverless and then after testing it locally if I deploy this then we will see how this is possible right because this is what we wanted to achieve if we are able to do this then we know like a lot of things about serverless how to use it and uh, how to do the configurations and all these things we have seen right so this is our main agenda that we should be able to achieve this okay now instead of uh, dynamo you can have a mongodb you can have a mysql that depends on your need right uh, if you have other than dynamo db then it is very easy for the local testing you can actually create a local instance of mongodb mysql but when it is even dynamo db you can actually install it locally right so that we will see and all these things we are going to control through serverless.yml in serverless.yml we will provide the configurations and then for each and every lambda configuration we will bind http event so if you see this currently we don't have functions we will add functions and we will bind them to the http events so that whenever any http event is occurring like we will bind it to the particular event http get put post and they should be routes right so that that particular lambda will execute and then it will actually get the data from DynamoDB. Okay, so we are going to do this local setup first. The only challenge here is the configuring the serverless.yml and adding all the functions, right? So let's say we have the functions. First, we will write them and we are going to execute this first locally. So we have introduced this DynamoDB local. This is important thing. We are going to test it with Dynamo. So DynamoDB local and serverless offline and stage and name and reason we have you can also add a profile like we are going to have we are going to use uh, serverless user profile which we have configured uh, with AWS credentials okay so now if you talk about the functions so here we are going to provide IAM role statement environments and all these things so in the environment what we need is the DynamoDB table name and we don't have a DynamoDB table, so we can generate it from the name of surveys, the name of stage, all these things. So we will first add the environment, like this is the DynamoDB table. And service name, it will use the service name, stage is dev, right? So it will actually create the table name accordingly, and we will use the same table name everywhere. And then second thing is IAM role statement, so this is important whatever we write in the IAM role statement because we are going to give Lambda permission to execute DynamoDB, I mean execute queries on DynamoDB. So here IAM role statement, the effect is allow, now we will add actions. Now what all actions you wanted to give? 
dynamo db queries can get item let's say i'm giving all the actions to this lambda i mean we are going to have multiple lambdas so i'm giving these roles globally right and then resource you will get an arn for that particular resource and arn we can actually format we can create if we know the dynamo db table name and the reason reason is going to be us east one stage is dev and the table name is this so we will just use these variables and we will construct the resource arn okay this is our i am role statement this is done we have the plugins and now we can actually focus on the functions functions let's say i am doing a create okay create function will have a handler so here is my handler inside handler like who is going to handle this the file name or something and the function name so inside to do's i will have a create file inside that i have a create as a handler to do create.js right this is the create i'm using okay so i will just add them and we will just look into the code and we will write the code for them events right here is what i am doing the binding of this so event is http event http event and then i have like these three attributes path is uh, http and uh, i have a path so let's add a tab here it, my path is to do's okay method is post i'm creating a to do's and cross origin is true similarly i can add other methods like list get this is create so i'll just copy this and i will use the same code we'll just change the variable names so this is create now i can just see it as a get and it is mapped with get file and get is the handler function name to do here method will be just changed to get uh, let's use it as a get by id right so here to do is get get and path can be id and here we can just do a get cross origin true and then we can have one more method which will do the list i mean i'm just i'm trying to get all the the list of all the to do's so it will also be get here it will be list dot list this is how i will do the mapping and i am getting all the to do's for this particular list right then we can have update delete same thing same story i will repeat again and then we will write these functions and we will use node.js sdk for aws to access dynamo db resources so there can be update update the only thing is update is update by id so here you can say update dot update is a function name to do's and i will be updating based on particular id instead of get i will have put method same i can use for the definition of delete i will be doing delete by id so this is delete so you can see i have written five lambda function we are deploying with this delete dot delete http method is delete and delete by id okay so this is the basic mappings i mean we haven't created resources for creating the dynamo db like what all partition key attribute names that dynamo db table is going to have that we will create in the resources so if you see the the main tags we have the providers we have the plugins we have the functions functions is all the lambda function definition plugins provider the global configurations your environments your timeouts your uh, i mean concurrency all these things you will de define here timeout memory and all if you want to override them you will do that at function level right here all the functions are going to share this dynamo db table as an environment and the iam role statement because we are all going to access this dynamo db table the another thing you can do is currently we have given the all the access to all the lambdas which they can query scan get put update but you can also provide this permission to a particular lambda okay i'm giving this 
get method to off only for get item or scan or query update will have only dynamodb put item delete will have only dynamodb delete item permission okay so this we have created now we have to do a few additional things to get this dynamodb running locally okay so for that i mean i also struggle it while setting this up so here is the important point is we are actually installing dynamodb local if you just do this we are using some serverless dynamodb local right so we will be actually running this dynamodb on some http port and uh, we will just use the start script right so what we are going to do is first of all we will create a resources using cloud formation template and we will write a custom template so that we can run the dynamodb locally on a particular stage stage is like dev here which is being used everywhere right and once the dynamodb is started we can actually do the query now rest all things are like okay how to write these lambdas create delete get list update we are going to access the dynamodb and we will just get is okay create get the all the to do's delete is delete by id right so we are going to use the dynamodb operations for them okay so let's see that in the next video what all cloud formation resources we have to create for dynamodb